let me just remind you of how serious Mark Meadows and Steve Bannon and Donald Trump were about overthrowing the government of the United States. On January 5th, Steve Bannon went on the air on his show and said, and, 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 and by the way, Chuck Grassley was expecting to be the guy to count the votes. What's that all about? Uh, but anyhow, he said, Mitch McConnell's got to start taking care and focusing on these senators because this is going to be very controversial. We are going into uncharted waters. We're going into something that's never happened before in American history. Tomorrow, we're pulling the trigger on something that's going to be, it's going to be minute by minute, hour by hour, what happens. The stakes couldn't be higher. It's not going to happen like you think it's going to happen. Okay, it's going to be quite extraordinarily different. All I can say is strap in. You made this happen, and tomorrow is game day, so strap in. Let's get ready. It's all converging, and we're now on the point of attack tomorrow. That was January 5th. So we've got this effort to overthrow the government of the United States. It failed, mostly. But now, in the individual states, you've got these same Trumpy politicians saying, democracy? We don't need no stinking democracy. Judd Legum is with us. He's the, uh, a journalist and the founder of Popular.info, uh, ex an extraordinary free newsletter. You can sign up for it at Popular.info. His Twitter handle, Judd at Judd Legum, L-E-G-U-M. And uh, Judd, I, I was caught by your, your post titled, Michigan's, Trump's Michigan allies are plotting to bypass the governor and impose new voting restrictions. Tell us about this. Well, it's, it's an interesting story because, you know, as you just detailed, after the January 6th, essentially failure of a coup, on January 6th, uh, a lot of Trump's political allies turned towards imposing different voting restrictions in states. And they were successful in some of these states like Georgia and, and Texas and Florida. Generally, they were successful in states that had both a Republican legislature and a Republican governor. Uh, Michigan was a little bit different. He has a lot of allies there. And in, in fact, in many ways, it was the center of a lot of his false claims about election fraud. But once they passed these bills, there's a Democratic governor, and she vetoed um, the bills, the uh, effectively voter suppression bills that were passed. Right. So now um, there's an effort to essentially do an end around the governor. They've got many of the same voting restrictions that they tried to pass um, you know, through the traditional process, but they've started a ballot initiative uh, collecting signatures to put this on the ballot. Um, now, that, that's not that unusual. You know, the, A lot of states have ballot issues, but Michigan has a special feature where you can collect the required signatures, several hundred thousand signatures, then, before the election, if the legislature passes that same legislation, it just automatically becomes law, and the governor cannot veto it. So that's what's underway now is sort of this, um, this very unusual process uh, that will cut out both the governor and the voters uh, from determining whether or not these restrictions uh, will will go into effect. Is this, uh, Judd, is this a consequence of the way that the Michigan Constitution is written, or does this go back? I know the, the law that allows uh, citizen initiatives has been altered twice that I recall in the last 10 years, um, you know, around uh, the, the uh, what do they call them, emergency managers stuff, as I recall. I mean, there was a couple of, you know, big yeah, controversies. Yeah, th this has been in place, this has been in place in Michigan for some time although it's only very rarely been used this mm -hmm. uh, this process to and you know essentially cut the governor out right. and the voters out of the process and and I, I think we should point out Donald Trump lost Michigan by 150,000 votes every uh, every candidate who ran for statewide office in Michigan and uh, you know and won was a democrat um, which means that the, Demo the Michigan House and the Michigan Senate would be democratically re controlled if the state was not heavily gerrymandered by Republicans. Uh, and, uh, you know, I don't recall if Rick Snyder was governor 10 years ago or not, but, you know, whenever that last happened. Yeah, and, you know, and I think that's, that's something that's, 
going on in in a lot of different states where the, a lot of the statewide candidates end up being Democrats, but uh, because of the legislative maps, um, yeah, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, yeah, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania is North, another example. North Carolina, of that. yeah, and that's actually going to be very critical as we head into 2022, because in those states, it was really the Democratic governor that prevented these efforts to overturn the election results from really gaining steam because the governor could just say, well, I'm going to certify the vote and I'm going to veto any legislative efforts to you know, change the rules about how to um, appoint uh, electors to the Electoral College. Now, in, in a lot of these states, um, there are Trump-allied candidates running for governor. Or secretary um, of state. Who, or sec and, yeah, state. And, or Secretary of State who who uh, have a much different uh, perspective on these things, obviously. Yeah. And uh, and it could play out a lot differently, um, you know, should they uh, be successful this year. The other part of we're talking with Judd Legum, um, popular dot info. Uh, the other the other part of your uh, newsletter uh, that I found fascinating was how giant corporations and I'm talking, you know, specifically here. Uh, Mary Barra, the CEO of General Motors, uh, Jim Farley, the CEO of Ford, uh, two of the largest employers in the state of Michigan, have you know openly come out and publicly condemned the efforts to overthrow democracy in America. And yet, those companies are pouring money down the throats of these same legislators who are trying to blow up democracy. Yeah, I, I think that's where there's the real you know disconnect here is that uh, you know, and these are iconic you know, Michigan companies. They have they have an enormous amount of sway uh, in the state because they're major employers and they're they're very much associated with the state. Uh, and they have you know publicly come out not only just against these efforts to overturn the election, but also against specifically efforts to restrict voting in Michigan. Uh, but they're they're really not willing at this point to follow through because they're continuing to fund you know a large group of republicans in michigan who are really in lockstep uh behind trump and continue to participate in these efforts to to restrict voting um you know based on trump's urging yeah. uh so um, you know, it, it's great that they're coming out and, and making statements, but until they're willing to, you know, back up what they're saying with the way they make their donations, it's hard to take it too seriously. Yeah, these are um, th these are folks who are, you know, actively and aggressively working to destroy our democracy, and and yet you've got these giant corporate contributions. I mean, over what 1.3 million dollars coming out of. Uh, 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 which was, uh, uh, da, 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 I'm trying to find, of the 11 legislators who signed the letter to Congress asking for an investigation into election fraud, 10 of, 10 of them have sponsored new voter suppression bills. These 10 legislatures, legislators have received $1.3 million in corporate donations. Is there, uh, you know, I realize you know, popular info is not the New York Times, and you're, and you're you know, leading a great crusade here, and, and you've been talking about this for a long time, about you know, basically corporate support for neo-fascism in America. Are you seeing a broader uh, realization that this is going on in the corporate media? And are you seeing any kind of a realization that this might be a problem in corporate boardrooms? Or do they think they can just slide by? I think it varies. You know, we, we've been tracking this on the national level, too, as we're looking at the companies who are donating to the folks who in Congress who voted uh, to overturn uh, the election, and I, I think the results are are mixed. I would say at, at mm. this point that you do have um, a, a, a not insignificant number of major companies. I think our latest count is you know somewhere between 85 and 90 who did make statements shortly after January 6th, and largely have or or absolutely have maintained those pledges. Uh, there's another group of, of um, several dozen companies uh, who made pledges and then very quickly got back to business a as usual. So I, I think the, the jury's still out. There certainly hasn't been wholesale changes. Some companies seem to be taking it a lot more seriously than others.